Hello, everyone. Welcome to People on Diddy. I'm your host, Will Morales. And for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, this is a topic-based conversation about the ups and downs of dating, whether you're 18 or 80, you have a story to tell. And the gist of this podcast is just a conversation, no judgments. So today I have David Milan. Let me tell you a little bit about David. David informs listeners about the art and science of interpersonal dynamics while offering useful insights into the power and control. He helps to empower our inner world as we learn to navigate the terrain of personal and professional relationships. Having worked for 20 years as a trainer and clinician in both government and private practice, David has the skills to equip each person with more confidence in their relationship journey. He is the author of the self-awareness method. David, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. How are you, sir? Thank you, Will. I'm awesome. It's another lovely day in paradise, is it not? Oh, it always is. So, David, tell us how you got into this into this uh, space. What was your journey like? What was it about you? Ha- you know, wanting to help people with uh, interpersonal dynamics. What was David's journey? Well, I, I started out in the military, and I started. Well, thank you for learn. serving. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. It was a a long time ago now. Yeah, right. <laughs> So I started out in the military and I started to learn that uh, human beings uh, are quite interesting and also there's a lot more to know about them than uh, meets the eye. Mm -hmm. After I left the military, I became a private investigator doing a lot of surveillance work again, uh, finding out that human beings uh, are mostly resource driven. After that, (laughs) I uh, went into mental health services and then I started looking at helping people with significant social anxiety connect Mm -hmm. with other people. So I started to learn all the drills and skills of how to do that, uh, which includes reading body language, facial expression. I learned hypnosis. Um, I learned how to read human code. I uh, also learnt uh, basically the, to understand the deepest part of who we truly are. And in doing that, I was able to assist a, a lot of people, males and females, to, to make really good decisions in relation to, to dating and creating connection with other human beings. Because a lot of my people that come to me have difficulty with narcissists or that kind of, of, of uh, behavioural profile, and they really don't want to meet the same person with a different face. So in my world, the interpersonal neurobiology of behaviour is critical. So it's really about naming it to tame it, feeling it to heal it, feeling it to reveal it to heal it, and rewiring our brains so that we can gain this thing called confidence, which is really just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again until you get good at it. So at the end of the day, that that's that's what I do now. Uh, and, and I've been doing that for oh, probably about what, six or seven years, uh, the dating and the relationship uh, connection work. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you're here. So because, <laughs> you know, our, our topic today is uh, communication, how, how hard can it be? <laughs> And, and the thing is, David, it seems like it is too hard. I mean, listen, I experienced it myself where uh, instead of maybe saying things that were on my mind or how I feel or how I felt, mm-hmm. I, had, I had a tendency to keep it inside and it would fester mm-hmm. inside me and mm-hmm. boom, then it's that one day that mm-hmm. I let it all out. So, David, how hard is it to communicate? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm surprised human beings can communicate at all because relatively speaking, language is a new thing to us. Mm-hmm. And I'm not politically correct. I am biologically correct. Mm-hmm. So if we look at the neurology of the human being, it's like a bell curve, really. Right. And if we understand communication, like linguistics, like literal words, we actually process language differently. Uh, males and females both process language differently. So if we are you know, using that analog or understanding in that way, literally ladies use both left and right hemispheres simultaneously whilst we mostly use our left and our right is sputtering a little bit. So for communication to be effective, we have to be able to understand or create or understand the meaning of other. Now, literally, our language creates meaning. 
So, for example, if I say to you right now, first impression, first thing that comes into your head, I'm going to just say the word camel. What do you see in your head? Uh, a camel. Right. Well, I see humps. Ah, someone, gotcha. I see the whole camel. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. absolutely right. So when I'm running a workshop, I do this with, you know, 15, 20 participants. Mm -hmm. And people will see camel cigarettes. I'll see humps. I'll see sand. I'll see the whole animal. Yeah. Now, that's one word. Mm. Now, imagine what it's like if we're going to add a few words together. So let's try it a little bit differently. Let's use more real estate up here. Yeah? Okay. So let's say I say, okay, let's say it's a three-legged camel walking backward up a hill following a magician holding a large staff with a purple flying robe. Now, how are you going with that one? Jesus. Uh, I, I see a three-legged camel walking backwards with a magician holding a candle. <laughs> <laughs> an ornate an ornate staff with a flying purple yeah right. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, i get your point you <laughs> get, you get the point one. yeah yeah you yeah, get yeah. the point now right. i'm not listening or I, I i heard what i wanted to hear you 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 would have processed the language based yeah. on your your interpretation or your experience right. of that language okay so as human beings we actually process information through our senses although there's something that's very important dr paul ekman uh, will tell you the leading specialist on uh, emotions is that we actually filter information through how we feel mm -hmm. so we're not just heads on sticks we're actually very feeling based or somatic, we would call it. Mm -hmm. So literally when let's say my partner's over here and I'm here and I'm looking at her and she's upset, she's actually processing what I say to her through the filter of her feelings, not necessarily through the filter of her higher prefrontal uh, functioning. Right. Not only that, she's also feeling words because words to her are an experience, whereas to me they're information. So there's a lot of stuff going on in that process. So in order to really, really communicate with other people, we kind of we kind of break it down and we go, okay, communication is really about, about making meaning and it's about, about getting on the same page. To get on the same page, there's a few things that we have to do. The first thing we have to do is we have to understand ourselves. So the deepest part of who we truly are. So we call it introspection. We have to be able to look inside and go, you know what? How do my thoughts, my feelings, and my behavior affect me? In other words, you know, what stuff am I carrying with me in this communication? What baggage am I carrying? Yeah. Now, we encode information epigenetically from three generations back. Then genetically, then we're absorbing between zero to three, basically what our caregivers uh, install into us. So literally our identity is installed into us early on. So we're not even our own person when we're little. And so after that, as we get older, we, we encode our relationship choices between the ages of five to eight. We imprint wow. like ducks. Yeah. It's Jesus, fascinating. That early. Yeah. Yes. Now, what's really interesting is people will keep saying to me, David, why am I going out with the same person with a different face? And I'm going to say, I'm your love map. It's that early life encoding, and we generally tend to move towards what we know or what we've encoded early. The earlier the encoding, the stronger the impression. So in actual fact, when you walk into any place and you see human beings, people, mm -hmm. you're going to be on some maps, and uh, they're going to be on some maps of your or a map of yours. Right. And so generally nature will, there's a whole bunch of processes that occur when we connect because attraction is actually how you feel about someone, not exactly what you look like or your height or your eye color. It's actually how you create the feelings in another person, how you generate those. So there's a whole bunch of unconscious processes going on and subconscious patterns of thought and feeling. And then finally, a poor old logical mind right at the top there, it's last to get the memo generally. Oh, geez. So in conversation, you know, if you've got some trauma going on and you're filtering through an old map of pain and you're feeling upset, well, you're going to be looking at your partner and when you look at them, literally they become the source of the pain because that's how the nervous system interprets the data. Yeah? And they're not, but they do. So when we're in a series of communications that are painful with two people, 
we're emotionally refracting. In other words, we're filtering through how we feel and our poor old prefrontal function real estate. In other words, we'll just use the word, our assessment ability, our ability to, to logically process that data and, and be more realistic and, and regulate how we feel and regulate how we think. It kind of often checks out. And when it's checking out, we are deleting, distorting, and generalizing. So what that means is we start to delete all the things that don't fit with how we feel. Literally, we start to delete that. Wow. So if you're angry and you're looking at someone, you're going to miss all the good stuff and only focus on where attention goes, energy flows. You're going to focus on the things that fit with how you're feeling, which is the anger or you know your upsetness. The second thing you're doing is you're distorting. Well, actually, you're generalizing. Generalizing is a better one. What we tend to do is we tend to get this language, and rather than being specific and detail orientated, and this would be what it looks like. Yesterday at three o'clock, I felt upset because of this. Right. It's not about you, it's about how I feel. I feel upset mm. because of whatever. And it was yesterday at two o'clock. So that's more specific. But before two o'clock, we were, you know, happy as Larry. Don't know if Larry's happy, but maybe he is today. Mm. So a generalization is it's always bad. This relationship's always bad. You always treat me poorly. You know, every time we get into this kind of argument, you know, it, it, it's a generalization because we're filtering through the feeling. Therefore, the language is becoming generalized. So literally, you might have been together 50 years, but suddenly the whole relationship's bad. How's that working? And then finally, my favorite, we're distorting. Because do you know memory is constructed? It's constructed on how you feel at the time of the interaction. Oh, geez. So <laughs> literally, if I'm feeling upset with you right now, I'm constructing a pretty bad memory about you. And uh, some emotion or f there's a difference between feelings and emotion. So feelings is the way that the nervous system tells us something's either pleasurable or painful. Because we've only actually got two feelings, pleasure and pain. Right. and emotion is the energy and motion of the feeling so suppression is depression so if we suppress our feelings this energy and motion it's, it follows the law of energy then it's going to come out somewhere or we're going to get very sick so what we actually need to do is process these feelings the more that we process these feelings the more tolerance we have to the feelings and what's going on and the more resilience we have and the more likely we are to be able to stay emotionally regulated. Unfortunately, when we're distorting, we're creating new memory based on how we're feeling at the time. And that becomes the last thing that we remember about the relationship. Relationships fail due to deletion, distortion, and generalization. Every time we, we have a memory, we're constructing it. We're constructing it based on our sensory data, our, our, our proprioception, your reception. So where we are in time and space, is it safe or unsafe? And how am I feeling about this? And, you know, some people have feelings about feelings, about feelings, about feelings. I think you know who they are out there in the audience. You'll know who I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and what that means is that there's that, uh, oh, it's called meta feeling. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that every time we have a feeling, let's say someone, let's say someone comes up to me, it's a dating scenario and they, 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 I go up to someone, let's say a person, I say, Hey, I really love your elegance and poise. That's an, that's an amazing, amazing whatever. And they feel really good about that. Wow, cool. That's awesome. But then they start to remember that their, their boyfriend or someone else may have had a go at them about something mm -hmm. associated with what I said. So a meaning will be applied to that. And then that meaning will come back and create a new feeling. And that feeling is actually going to be stronger than the feeling before it. So every time a feeling is created, the new feeling is stronger than the feeling before it. And finally, it becomes literally the last feeling we're left with is how we're really encoding that interaction. So often we're standing there and we're having a great conversation with someone and they go cold or they go weird. And what's happening there is they're actually doing meta feelings. They're experiencing an experience, a feeling state, but they're also applying meaning to those feelings. And those feelings will also have a past reference. Now, sometimes we can't see the past reference. It's in the unconscious or subconscious regions of our brain or our because our whole body stores this information, not just the head. 
And you just don't know in communication literally where you're going to go. So the trick of it is to be able to recover that. And the other trick of it is with your language to create an incredibly good feeling in someone because the more they like you, the more connected they are. The more the connected they are, the more attracted they are technically. So within 30 seconds, we might make judgments. But after that, if you're making someone feel incredibly good about you, guess what? They're going to start to like you. And when they start to like you, then things are going to go a lot better. Does that answer your question? Because this is a huge topic. No, 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 it does. I, you know, it, it's one of the things that I noticed of what you said is I remember I was dating this woman. This is 10, 12 years ago. And even though there were more good times than bad, towards the end of the relationship, I started feeling more of the bad. Yeah. And, and it was harder for me to communicate my feelings towards the that that bad mm. part of our relationship mm. um because i felt okay you know what this this relationship is over we kind of you know uh, it was drawn out you know we had our differences you know she wanted me to do mm. one thing i wanted to do another mm. and i felt david that i i i could have been better at communicating but again i was holding the feelings in you know i mm. did say a few things mm. where she wanted to you know maybe hang out again one more time and i told her i'm ready to move on and that was the hardest thing i had mm. ever had to say that mm. i was ready to move mm. on you know mm. we had good times but i i just i can't do this anymore mm. she said oh wow you know i didn't expect that from you you know that's hard to hear but I, that's how I felt at the time, David. I felt that I needed to move on because I just felt, I just started remembering more of the bad than good. So when we get into that stage, mm -hmm. what's the next step for us? Especially if we're the ones that are feeling bad, even though we, there were more good times than bad. Where mm -hmm. do we go from here? Is it more communication, or do we, you know, you know, do we draw out the communication? In other words, as I say, you want me to draw your picture, spell it out for you. <laughs> It's it, look, it, it is difficult in in my world relationships. I mean, as I said, I work in basically biology. It's it's right. quite fascinating. So I work at the deepest part of how humans function. So for me, there's three primal functions: the safety, protection, procreation. Most of us are doing all of that lot. So when we're in a relationship, let, let's 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 be a little bit clinical for a moment. Let's take the heart out for a minute, although that's not a, a good idea normally, <laughs> but we'll do that right now just to make it understandable. So relationships have a thing called relational equity, mm -hmm. which means we all bring stuff to the relationship. And there's there's different kinds of equities. There's physical, there's mental, there's emotional, there's financial, there's sexual, there's spiritual. And we, these are also what we call our resources. Now, human beings are resource driven, as I said earlier, and there are different kinds of resources that we want. So when we first meet, usually it's a bunch of chemicals, right? Dopamine, oxytocin, your brain, it's a whole bunch of chemicals that make us feel really good about the other person and often miss the red flags, you know. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> and that's, and, you know, 18 months that wears off and you, you, you wake up one morning and you go, oh, my God, did you just fart in bed? Oh, all right, that's it, I'm leaving. <laughs> so before that, you were cool. Okay. Yeah. So at the end of the day, at first, when we're first meeting, it's really biology, it's nature. And, you know, we have this, this, this love map that determines how, what we're attracted to. Mm -hmm. And you've got a more, if you meet, if someone is on your love map or you're on their love map, you've got about an 85% chance of having a better connection nice. than if they're not. So if I, if, I, if I walk into a place and I'm someone's love map, they, they will be more attracted to me but if i am not on their love map or you know and i look at them although i'm, I'm a creep you know nah, nah. but if i am on their love map that's cool right, right. <laughs> so you've you've got this you've got this situation whereby when we're meeting we're really looking at it being clinical for a moment sorry audience but this is what i've got to do right. it's a cost benefit analysis think of it like that wow so when you go into a relationship, it's about, okay, what do I bring? What do they bring? And, you know, what are the things that we can build on? What are the things that are detracting from this relationship? And are we willing to work on that? 
because we have to have communication to do that. It's got to be verbal. By the way, body language, facial expressions is all the first kind of communicating. Mm -hmm. And then verbal, you know, if we're lucky, we can understand which camel we're looking at. But at the end of the day, I'm saying, okay, it's a cost-benefit analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine whether this person has capacity to make changes or not. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, there's four things that are critical for change. There's insight empathy, compassion, and a thing called response flexibility. You can uh, thank Dr. Daniel Siegel for, for that, 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 yeah? Mm -hmm. So, well, not that bit, but the last bit, response flexibility. So insight's the most important one. Is this person able to know how they think, how they feel, and how it affects them? Not others, but them. Right. So they're not saying, oh, it's your fault. It's all about you. You did it. If you only did that, this would happen. Uh, 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 that's blame shift, yeah? Right. What we're looking at is, does this person have capacity for insight? If they have capacity to in, for insight in my world, they have capacity for change. And that's what I'm assessing. So I'm being clinical right now. Yeah. Secondly, when we have insight, we can have empathy. We can feel another's pain. We can connect in that way. Oh, my golly gosh. And by the way, never connect in your trauma. Don't make that the commonality. Uh, I have trauma. You have trauma. We connect in trauma because then we're connecting in the pain. Right. Yeah, right. connect on the fun things, the good thing, yeah? That comes later. So if we have insight, we have empathy, then we have compassion. We have the capacity to look at the situation, as Singer said, from a 360-degree viewpoint and work out what's best for everybody. So not just me, not just my partner, but our family, our kids, all that lot, if we have those mm -hmm. by that time. And finally, we have this response flexibility, this ability to not be rigid, not be stuck, but to change our behaviour on the fly, to assess the situation, be more specific than generalised, recognise the deletions, the distortions and the generalisations, and be more realistic about what's actually going on. In other words, we can look at those good times and go, you know what, what, what how can we enhance that? When we look at the not so good times, we're going to say, what learning lesson did we get from that? Right. Because pain is the greatest teacher. Pleasure is the point between two pains. Relationships are not easy. They were never meant to be easy because you're emotionally leveling up, guys. It's about emotional evolution. We have physical evolution, but relationship creates emotional evolution, which means if everything's going well, we've got equal equity, we level up together. If we're not so the same-ish, we will have some difficulties in, in leveling up. Some people will kind of go, whoop, I'm gone. Other people will go, what? We're stagnating. Right. So we have this discussion about, you know, what are our intention? What's our goals? What do we want to get out of this relationship? Where do we want to be in 10 years? And in that way, when we have that kind of dialogue, we're actually starting to really get to know each other in a really deep and meaningful way, which often keeps us together because there are things that we actually need for a relationship to work. The first thing is we need safety. We have to be physically safe, mentally safe, emotionally safe, financially safe, sexually safe, spiritually safe. It's a bit like our resources, is it not? Yeah. Now, secondly, believe it or not, in, in relationship, we need a little bit of playfulness. Have you ever met that person that's all... Yeah, yeah, of course. All the time. <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, my golly gosh, wow, smile, lighten up. Yeah. It is a lovely day in paradise. I'm not just being sarcastic. All right. The next thing we need is a bit of mystery. Mm. We need to, to have that mystery where things are still, a bit, you know, there's still more exploration to do after 25 years of marriage. You still don't know everything about that person. And the, the next thing we need is commonality of value systems. In other words, our values, because values, when you start looking at linguistics of connection, when we start to do the, the talking bit in my work, we look at value listening questions. What's important about? What's important to you about trust? What's important to you about commitment? What's important to you about love? Because once we elicit values, we elicit criteria. And the criteria is what tells us do we line up or not. And lastly, we actually need, and people don't believe this, but it's true, we need drama. 
relationships actually need drama. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, one, no that, one, yeah. that was out of left field, as they say. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so talk Absolutely. more about that. Wow, drama. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, it's a bell curve, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to get into, into coquetting today. But okay. It's a bell curve. Okay. So what that means is drama is a mechanism by which we process our feelings. Mm-hmm. Think about it. We've got these this energy in motion. We've got a lot of us have trauma, a lot of us have stuff, baggage. How do we process that? We need this other person to activate that. So they activate it. And when we're talking to them about how we're feeling and how we're thinking, we're hoping to golly gosh, they validate and acknowledge us. And then they're talking about how they're feeling and thinking we're validating and acknowledging them we're leveling up together and we're processing our stuff. A robust debate is not a bad thing. It does not break a relationship. What we, what we need is to be able to say how we're feeling and thinking in a safe way. And, and sometimes that's having an argument. Although after that argument, we're not resentful. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not stonewalling. We're not just ignoring that person. We're going, you know what? I learned something from that. And they say, you know what, I learned something too. I learned something new about you. Great, let's go to the next level. Right. So drama is the mechanism by which we process our feelings within relationship. We learn a little bit about our tolerances and you know how much we can tolerate, what we can't tolerate. And and if if we we know that we can have a little bit of drama with our partner, then we know that we're actually safe. So what worries me is these people who say, Oh, we don't fight. We don't, we don't argue. And I'm going, whoa, interesting. How much she's suppressing? I wonder what's in that yeah. bottle, love. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really important. But as I said, it's a bell curve. Right. Too much drama is detrimental. It's right. destructive. Too little drama, eh, it might be okay if you yeah. like that. But just the right amount of drama, like Goldilocks says, you know, just the right amount of robust debate in relationship, because there are times we're going to disagree and you need to feel you can disagree with your partner and say, hey, babe, I don't, I don't agree with you. Then. No, when, when, I, when I said that thing, I didn't mean it that way. I'm a bloke, right? Yeah. So literally information, not experience, not lots of meaning. Right. So at the end of the day, you know, my neurons are a little bit further apart in that communication region. Mm-hmm. So yours are very close together and they're going, and you never stop thinking. And I do have a nothing box. Have a nothing box. No, have a nothing. Okay. Where I sit and I do nothing. Mm. I'm not thinking about nothing. Oh, okay. I was so, going to ask you, are we collecting our, recollecting our thoughts and just start maybe going over some stuff that we did wrong or not right or, or, uh, um, you know, are we mad at that person? So that's what I, that's what I thought you meant, but yeah, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. It's all yeah, good. no, this is fascinating. It's, it's all good. So drama within yeah. reason, you know, uh, minor arguments, you see couples have them all the time and they don't yeah. necessarily split up. In fact, they learn about each other. They understand each other. They process their feelings. Mm. Because if you're going to process feelings, you really need some trigger for that. And the second thing we need to do is when we speak to someone, what we're actually looking for is them to acknowledge and validate us. Because there's an old motivational interview saying it's quite good. We don't know what we think until we hear ourselves speak. Mm. We don't know what we think till we hear ourselves speak. So when I've got stuff bottled up inside and I'm going and I'm speaking yeah. and it's not pleasant, I'm actually processing my thoughts at that point and I'm processing my feelings and what I'm hoping for is this other person at the other side of it is going, hey, babe, I, I get you feel like that. Although, you know, speaking to me like that's not okay, I get you feel like that. Mm-hmm. And then that way I go, oh, right, I get it. Okay, so I'm not, yeah, okay. So they're validating and acknowledging my feelings, although they still have boundaries and limits around my behavior. So it it, it really is a dance. Communication is a very complicated thing in relationship. Yeah. From the very first start to the very end of the relationship. A lot of my work is actually getting people back with people and it can be done if you understand how these processes work. A lot of my work is actually helping people just meet people 
and utilizing uh, their, their ability to make the connections in an appropriate way. Reading the seven step safety code, for example, because we have one. Mm. And if we don't understand the seven step, step, blah, seven step safety code, we can be breaking someone's code. And when we're breaking their code, technically their nervous system is having a little freak out. We might not even be aware of that, yeah. So does that answer your question? Because it's a very long-winded way of doing it, although there's so much in it that you know. No, I mean, it. listen, no, it definitely answered the question. I think I like the the one of the like the four part. Um, I forgot what you call it, but it's insight, empathy, compassion, and was it response? Um, like flexibility. Flexibility. Yes, that's and, correct. And I think um, if I, I think the part is having the empathy. I've I've known people. I've I went out with some women that it's just not fair. Um, so it's, I, I want to go back to that because I think that's so important. You know, having those four. Um, I don't know what was the, the term you used for those four. Um, was was there a, a a phrase that you used for those four um, words? That, you know, the insight, the empathy, yep. the uh, yep. compassion, and, and responsive yep. um, flexibility. Um, what, what what would you call those four? Like, if you were to put it like in, in one category, because I think if if you don't have one or the other, or if you don't have all four, is it something that we should can continue with this relationship, or we're hoping to build? Especially, you know, I I know friends of mine that one of them doesn't have the empathy, you know, so now. Um, Oh, he doesn't care how I feel. Oh, she doesn't care how I feel. You know, I want to talk things out, but you know, she doesn't want to hear because she was busy. My God, it, it it's so, and that causes drama because the other person is going to be upset because they're not being heard. Heard. Yeah, um, that's it. So one of the things, David, and we're talking with David Milan. Um, communication how hard can it be and david's explaining it that in certain terms it could be hard in certain terms it can't or it could be hard it can't be hard it depends how you communicate with the other person how you start the communication david before i let you go first of all i want to thank you so much for being here um is there some steps that we can take to be better communicated with our partner especially on the man's mm -hmm. side because like, <laughs> like i said for me I used to suppress my feelings, hold them in, and then mm, boom. Yep. So mm. any couple, any mm. steps that we could start mm. and, mm. you know, and letting our feelings out, so to speak, <laughs> that might be a wrong word, but. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, it's good. It, it's great, Will. The, to answer the first question, the insight, empathy, response, flexibility, compassion side is an assessment. Mm, so okay. that's my clinic. That is my clinical side of me coming right. out. When I am meeting a person, I'm assessing for the, that capacity. Gotcha. If they have that capacity, then leveling up is, is, is guaranteed because okay. they can do those things, which yeah. means eventually we'll, we'll have a good relationship. If, for example, they lack insight, which is the most important one. Yeah. So they, they, they're just not looking inside and saying, hey, how's all this lot affecting me? And then how do I affect others, which is then, of course, the empathy and the compassion. Then I'm going to say that the relationship may be a little rocky, although not necessarily not doable, because there are, are processes by which it, it's a bell curve. As I said, it's like a spectrum. So on the spectrum, you know, you, you go all the way from relationships that are fairly, well, I don't like the word normal, but we'll use it. To, to your sociopaths and your psychopaths right at the other end uh, and your narcissistic behaviour. And by the way, narcissism is complicated because... That seems like the term. That seems like the yeah. term these days, narcissism. Yeah. I've been hearing that for yeah. at least over yeah. a year now. Yeah, and, it, and it's not that simple. Yeah. Narcissistic behaviour has a profile mm -hmm. and nar people who have complex trauma can often be very self-centred because they are distressed and they don't have the capacity to actually take on other people's stuff like their partners. Mm -hmm. So they can be extremely self-centered, although they're not narcissists. So it's, it's complicated. Right. Now, what, you know, to, to improve communication, the first thing that, that I would be looking at is those four things. Do I have them? 
Mm. And secondly, does my partner have them? And your relationship will determine that. The easiest way to know if someone doesn't have insight, there'll be a blame shift. It'll be all about everybody else. Right. <laughs> they will not take responsibility for their stuff. And that's a very difficult position to be in in communication because now you're always wrong. You're always at fault. Mm. Now we call it hundred percenting, zero percenting, hundred percenting. So someone who is a blame shifter will be basically zero percent responsible for everything, which makes you a hundred percent responsible so for, for everything. everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is not a doable scenario in a relationship long term, right? right. So the first thing that, as I said, I'm looking for is those elements. Now, as far as communication goes, if we're talking about, about males and mm -hmm. being a male, uh, we've got to remember that we process language differently to female. Right. That is really important to know. I have a laugh at marriage counselling because if you've got a male and a female in a room, they are processing language differently. Literally, look at an fMRI scan. You will see it. Right. So and I don't mansplain. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm only biologically correct. Yeah. So at the end of the day, my lovely lady, my wife is processing language simultaneously across the left and right hemisphere. She's integrated. She is literally feeling words. Mm -hmm. Words to her are an experience. Now, I have the same capacity because when I'm listening to her talk, my left side's firing up, it's sequencing, and it's doing some pretty cool things, but my right side's sputtering. So unless there's a lot of meaning attached to that word, mm. then I am not going to have as much of an emotional response. I'm much more of language to me is information. Mm. So when I tell her something, I'm actually giving her information. Mm. Now, if she's feeling that word and it has a specific meaning applied to it that's not so flash, I'm going to get back some feelings. Mm. And when she's talking to me, she's actually telling me how she feels. Now, she might be calling me something that's not pleasant, <laughs> might start with D and might end up with CH and has a canoe on the end. <laughs> and yeah. I was called that last night. Right. And so... I know she's actually saying to me, I'm upset with you. You hurt me. Right. I'm in pain. Right. And so she's telling me using that language. So it's up to me as a man to go, okay, you're in pain. Hey, babe, I get you're upset right now. I get it. Mm. I get you're upset right now. I've got to acknowledge her feelings. It's so critical. We've got to acknowledge each other's feelings. Yeah. And and if I'm suppressing my feelings, which as a bloke I do tend to do, I'll be honest with you, you know, again, I'm just... I'm a hunter, so you know I'm not. I'm designed to focus on the, the task and not see the periphery. And yeah. you know, I'm not detail orientated, specific. It's called a man look. <laughs> and so, literally, yeah. and I'm a bit of a stand-up comedian, so just I can tell. <laughs> so, so literally, here I am hunting my prey, and I'm not noticing stuff, and she's noticing everything. Mm. Darling, did you notice this? Uh, do I lie or do I tell the truth? Hmm. Lying is a strategy, although she's got a big value about, oh, darling, I didn't know that. So, right. so at the end of the day, what I've got to do is, is acknowledge her feelings. Hmm. Acknowledge my feelings. Acknowledge my mate's feelings. Acknowledge your feelings, Will. So if you say I'm upset, acknowledge it. Hey, I, 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 I don't understand but I get that you're feeling that way. Right. We don't understand each other because we're actually a little wide, a little different. Although we can get that another person is having that experience. Now, there's a very, very important thing here. At that point, I don't want to be right. We have this propensity for always being right. But you know what? When you defend yourself, you are actually insecure. Mm -hmm. You're actually saying that I've got something to prove. Now, if you're self-sufficient, which is what actual attraction is, self-sufficiency, mm -hmm. if you're self-sufficient, you don't have to prove anything. You can have that conversation with your partner. You can allow that process to occur. Yeah. You can acknowledge their feelings. And you can have that conversation where we can get to the solution to the problem if we're going to call it that, if we're going to be solution-based. Because if feelings aren't processed, guess what happens? They're stored. The memory stored, the meaning is stored, and 10 years later, you're getting it back. Mm. Trust me. You're driving <laughs> down the road, and suddenly this thing that you done 10 years ago gets brought up. Hey, remember when you did that? Uh -oh. 
<laughs> so literally, you better validate and acknowledge those feelings. Hey, yeah. babe, I noticed you're upset. I'm really sorry about that thing I did 10 years ago, be honest. And in reality, then that will help. And, of course, that person, my partner, she would acknowledge me. Hey, babe, I, I recognize, I feel this, I feel that. Yeah. And, and we can have the discussion. If the feelings aren't processed, they are stored, basically, is what I'm saying. We, we've got to really acknowledge the feelings yeah. in each other and acknowledge the thoughts and then work towards, okay, how can we, what can we learn from this learning lesson? Because mm -hmm. the past is pretty useless. There's only learning lessons, really. Right. And the future is just unpredictable and uncertain. So I've only got the now. <laughs> so right now I'm sitting in the car and right now I am, you know, doing this process. Right. Uh, the, the past, if the feelings are not acknowledged and validated, it, it will come back. So that's what, that's the best thing in my humble opinion, although I don't give advice because I'm not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what it, it's really about acknowledgement and genuine acknowledgement for, for, for anyone, right. male, female, the person's feelings, their thoughts, not needing to be right and jump on them. Oh, but you, oh, but you, oh, but remember when you did that. Yeah. Oh, but I'm, I'm right, you're wrong. Impasse. Mm. Something's got to give. Someone's got to be the adult because technically, when we're upset, we're actually in our child brain. Technically, we're all the way back in time in the old map that was encoded when we we're little in that identity that wasn't ours. And we are literally stuck. So, someone's got to wear whatever. Someone's got to wear the pants. Someone's right. got to be the, ad the adult yeah. and go, you know what, love or, or, or honey or whatever. Um, I, you know, I get it and I acknowledge it. And let, let's talk about it. Let, let's let's do that thing. Uh, what's your thoughts, Will? Because that's it's a very complicated process. No, no, yeah, it's quite simple. If you just acknowledge people's feelings and their but, thoughts and not be right, you're doing well. Yeah, I it think that's a, the main yeah. thing. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I just think. There, yeah, go ahead. Dave. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. And there is a time to put your concepts and opinions across. Yeah. Although. When someone is upset and they're filtering through their feelings, that's not the time. Mm. Because when they're upset and filtering through their feelings and they're looking at you, guess what? You become the source of their pain. So the time is not when someone's upset. The time is later when they're not refracting, when they're not in that space. And you can say, hey, babe, the other day, you know, when, when this happened and you felt like that and I felt like that and we had that discussion, yeah, you know, this is this is this is how I'm feeling and thinking about it now. And most of the time, that discussion will be quite appropriate and normal. There'll be no problem. Although, while they, they, we have a saying, "Never dive for pearls when the ocean's rough." <laughs> so when when it's when someone's angry, you just want to do the rock. Hey, I get it, and I love you, and I'm going to acknowledge and validate you. Right. Later on, we'll have the the other discussion when both. All of our brains all integrated and working properly and we're not in an emotional refractory period right. because these periods they can last anywhere from a and male refractory periods tend to be shorter mm. so if i settle down in five or ten minutes and i've suddenly forgotten we had an argument and i walk out into the room my partner's refractory period might be a little longer mm. so as soon as i say something boof it's on again mm. so i've got to be aware that 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 there are there are differences and there are similarities. We're not all the same. Yeah. And so we're all wired kind of differently, but we do have some basic functions in, in, in this area. And just by remembering that, then we, we can move forward. And look, everything is sortable and solvable. It's just a matter of being regulated enough in your in your mind and your emotions to actually get to that next step. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's perfect. I mean, my God, David, you, uh, you definitely woke up some things in me of, of, you know, of being such sometimes a close person, but it's always just acknowledging the other person's feelings and, and just look, making sure that, like you said, if they're still upset with me, okay. Like I said, for me, and I, and I kind of agree with you, me, it might be five, 10 minutes and then I'm pretty much okay again. You know, it, it really does leave my body. But I've been with uh, some women that the anger is like, 
geez, a few hours. And I'm like, oh boy, maybe mm -hmm. I should go to the store and go to the grocery mm -hmm. store and shop or whatever. Mm -hmm. But anyway, mm -hmm. first of all, Dave, I want to thank you so much for being on People on Day. I really appreciate it. And before I let you go, just a couple more things. Talk about your coaching program. Well, I I run workshops. I'm in Australia. Yeah. I run workshops both online and in person. Mm -hmm. My workshops are called Personal, personal and Professional Empowerment mm -hmm. and Relationship Self-Defense. Mm -hmm. So I teach people how to linguistically and body language, facial expression wise, manage difficult relationships. Mm -hmm. Because all relations, all, not all relationships, but a lot of relationships can be managed. We don't have to kind of, you know, when the Titanic's sinking, we don't have to roll away on the life raft. Right. There are some things that we can do to manage relationships. A big part of my work is working with people who want to stay in difficult relationships. They choose to. They're not there out of insecurity. They're there because they choose to stay and helping them to be able to stay in those relationships and become empowered within those relationships. So technically what I do is I work with empowerment and uh, power dynamics, how power actually works in relationship as, as well as, you know, other things to do with communicating and, and the best ways to do that. So the workshops are, are online and they're also in person and they run for a day so people can can uh, sign up for those when they're on our website uh, and they can be they can learn those skills and those drills to gain that empowerment and get to that deepest part of who they truly are understand their original old map their love map mm -hmm. what they might be attracting to themselves or not and reconstruct their identity because we actually relationship is actually about identity construction mm -hmm. so when someone has a midlife crisis it's actually an identity crisis so when that identity goes or that identity starts to fail often there's a lot of distress right. so for us it's about in relationship it's about maintaining a strong identity mm -hmm. but at the same time being very flexible with your partner you know, to maintain those those good feelings and, and and that that connection. So that's that's what that's what we do. Uh, that's our workshops. All right, no, that sounds good. I'll definitely put on the show notes. And you have a, if I read this right, you you have a book. It's called the Self Awareness Me Method. That is actually my model of practice that I created. Gotcha. To help people understand the how they operate understand okay. their operating system right. because it's like a computer if i understand how the operating system works mm. and i'm a pretty good hacker let's say right <laughs> I, I can fix it yeah yeah but if i don't understand the operating system of myself or my partner then i'm really at a loss of how to even begin to make the, the things work so I teach people how the operating system of the human being works, how it works. And in that way, the self-awareness method is the model that I use to actually do that. I am writing a book at the moment called The Secret Life of Kevin. Okay. And it is uh, about uh, relationships and all of my knowledge over the 20 odd years of doing this that I have accumulated in story form. When would so, that be available? Uh, probably next year in May, it should be available. The Secret Life of Kevin. Yeah, no, I, I definitely looking forward for that. And if somebody <laughs> wanted to get in contact with you, what's the best way? The best way is through the website, mymilan.com.au. That is the best way to book an appointment to see me. As I said, I see people online, yeah. uh, in person. And just, just book through our website. It's the easiest way to catch up with me and we'll have a, we'll have a chat. Yeah. It's, just, it's just, just too easy. <laughs> too easy. Well, well, David, again, I, I appreciate you being on People on Dating. Thank you so much. Uh, you're you. definitely my first, uh, I guess I could say, a, a worldwide experience. Now you're in Australia. Here I am in the United States in New York City, our time zones. Thank you for letting me know. It's eight, eight, it was 8 in the morning here, 8 at night yeah. where you are. So, again, yeah. thank you so much Perfect. for doing this. Thanks. For I really appreciate it. Thanks, Will. You have a wonderful day and I'll have a wonderful evening. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, all right, my friend. Thank you very much. 
Well, everyone, that was David Milan, and you can find him at mymilan.com.au. That's mymilan.com.au. David, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. Much appreciated. You can find me on peopleondating.com. That's peopleondating.com. Check out our past shows and check out our blog. Also, when you get a chance, please go to Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe. Leave a review. Tell us how we can make this show better. I'm also on Google Podcasts and Spotify. Anyway, guys, I just want to thank you so much for listening. On behalf of People on Dating, I'm Will Morales. Until next time, thanks, everybody. Have a great day, and please stay safe. Bye.